Well, hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Memo TV. It's me, Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. That's right, folks. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for continuing to be so awesome, spreading the love, spreading just awesome energy, and really having a great time communicating. I truly enjoy you guys. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Really, really love you guys. And hopefully you're going to love this week's Cocktails or Rocktails because we're getting punk rock again, folks. We're going back to Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols. This is about a year into seeing each other. Um, Seattle, Washington, when they were on their reunion tour. And our cocktail for the day is going to be the Sex Pistol. They actually have a drink, the Sex Pistol. Oddly, because most of them don't drink anymore. So everybody, grab your pistols, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Cheers, big ears. That's a lot better than I thought it was going to be because the mixture recipes down in the description along you guys with uh, where to find my book, my merchandise and my Patreon links are all down in the description. So just scroll on down. They're at the very bottom past all the hashtags. Scroll on down. See what you like. If you like it, cool. And anyway, there is a set. Steve Jones started my sex pistol or my backstage bimbo merchandise with a quote that I said, I fucked Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols and all I got was this t-shirt. Thank God. Pretty much. <laughs> so this is going to be, I'm going to cover the bottom part for the time being. This is going to be this show of the Sex Pistols. This is August 30th, Seattle, Washington was the day of the show. But Crazy Lisa and I went up on the 29th of August for my birthday. We actually got in town on the 27th, because I used to live in Seattle, my cousin Petey was there. I was going to see some old friends and hang out and meet up with a tour. Because this is still before Steve Jones and I exchanged phone numbers. He kept thinking I was going to give him my phone number, and I still had not given him, given him my phone number yet. About a year into it. So this is August. We met September of 1995. This is August of 1996. So I had seen him many times by this point. You know, he had been touring with uh, Neurotic Outsiders. Like I said, wearing that velvet suit that you guys see in the other, one of the other videos I've already done of him. And, you know, this was the very first Pistols reunion tour ever since they broke up in the 70s. So this was a big thing. And they were playing Bummer Shoot in Seattle. Now, Bummer Shoot happens every August. I love August in Seattle. There's hella sales, like 75% off at Gucci and Betsy Johnson and stuff. But Bummer Shoot always has a bunch of big bands and a bunch of kind of medium bands and then unknown bands, but all very cool music. Just a huge variety, all day, three day concert. Sex Pistols were playing the last night on the Saturday night as the headliner. Like I said, I had not exchanged phone numbers, so Steve did not know I was coming up to Seattle. And Crazy Lisa was my roommate at the time. I'm like, yeah, let's just go up, have a good time, fuck off, whatever. So we have a good time, we're playing, we're just goofing off, hanging out, doing some shopping in Seattle, stopped by Betsy Johnson the day before, got some cute clothes, I had some dinner on the night of my birthday, and the day after was the Pistols. So we go up to Seattle Center because it's where all the concerts were going on, so I knew the venue very well from living in Seattle before. Walked right to where I knew where the buses went in and stuff, and... There was a security guard there. We had just seen the white vans go in, and the white vans are always what the band is in. So I just seen the white vans go in as we were walking up, and I saw Steve in there. And I just kind of was like, oh, hey. So we went down by the fence where the buses park, kind of by the backstage area, and not five minutes, not even five minutes, like two minutes after those vans pulled in and uh, Crazy Lisa and I were standing, by the fence, their security guard came up and he was talking. He's like, are you from Las Vegas? I said, yeah. He's like, what's your name? I said, Allison. He's like, here you go. Steve would like to come, would like to see you. I said, I bet he would. <laughs> so we go walking backstage and it's an outdoor venue. So their dressing rooms are the little trailers and stuff. And 
we go into Steve's trailer and, hey, love, how you doing? What are you doing in Seattle? Because he knew I used to live, there, live here. He's like, did you move back? I'm like, no, just visiting. It was my birthday yesterday. So he's like, really? He's like, it was my birthday on the 3rd. It's so we're both Virgos. And I'm like, yeah, we're both Virgos. And he's like, well, baby, he's like, I got to give you a little present. So he gave me a little present right in there. And Lisa just sitting there. She's like, I think I'm going to go outside. So she went and wandered around and stuff while Steve and I celebrated my birthday. And he got his little birthday. Whatever. Hanging out. So it was really awesome because, like, he saw me and he was, like, right on top of it. Sent that security guard out. Was like, hey, go ask her if this is, and this is the first time he would do this. This is not the last time. And it would be years later, not long after John died in 2002, that, yeah. So this is something he would do with security guards. Even after I gave him my phone number, or actually I didn't give him my phone number. He gave me his phone number first, but that's all part of this story. So anyway, we do our little thing in the dressing room, fix my makeup, come out, we're hanging out. We go to the side of the stage and the Sex Pistols play, which was awesome because I've never seen the Sex Pistols play. And I don't care if it said to me was kind of a secondary member, so to see with Glenn Matlock and stuff, I was cool with. And to watch Steve on stage because I still had not seen Steve play. Even when he was on tour with Neurotic Outsiders and... Yeah, there's a whole nother story in Vegas. There's a few stories in Vegas, but I kind of skip forward to this one. So anyway, typical night. Like I said, watch the show. He's like, show gets over. They're doing some autographs, whatever. Gets in the shower. And he's like, meet us back at the Sorrento Hotel. Which is a nice, classic, old school hotel here in... Uh, God, you can't see it. That's what it says on the top of the paper, the Sorrento Hotel. And it's a nice, like I said, old school, beautiful, kind of classic hotel downtown Seattle. So, Lisa, crazy Lisa and I jump into a cab and we go over to the Sorrento and we're staying like a block away at the Camblin. Which, if you've seen my Seattle the first time, that's where we used to, another cool, old school, beautiful hotel that where. Danny and I would steal the hotel keys from the bands so we would have some place to stay the first time I was in Seattle in uh, 1990. So same hotel. Still hadn't changed. Still was staying. But this time legitimately I paid, you know, it was paid for. And so anyway, we go and get there just right as the boys pull up. So here we come walking across the hotel lobby because you could see the security guard was about to ask us what we were doing there. And then Steve and everybody, Steve and Paul and um, uh, Glenn came up and Steve was like, I love. And so he's, we all get in the elevator and Steve's like, he's like, well, for my birthday, he's like, because, you know, he's like, I gave you what you wanted for your birthday, which I know what that is. Oh, he's so good at doing what I want him to do. Mm. But anyway, so he's like, so for my birthday, he's like, let's get a little kink. And let me preface this whole situation with every woman has that one guy that she will just do whatever. Because at this point, it was kind of not a game or whatever to me, but it was kind of, I like that Steve Jones is addicted to me because he was sexually, mentally, emotionally, whatever. He was 100%. He's got an addictive personality. He's even said this to me. And I knew he was addicted to me. So I knew the only addiction that he was servicing at the time was his sexual one. He was, he's been sober. He was totally 100% sober the whole time I've known him and good on him. But he was still sexually, that's how he was feeding whatever insecurities or fears that were going on inside of him was sexually. So I also knew if I did whatever he wanted to me to sexually, I would keep him coming back to me. So I was feeding, intentionally feeding his sexual addiction to me. So he says, Lisa kind of walks down the hallway with Glenn Matlock. They kind of are talking. So she walks down with Glenn and Steve and I, he's like, He's like, I want to see you with, with Paul. He's like, that would turn me on. And I'm like, what? So I'm thinking just, you know, two, another threesome. I've had these before. I don't necessarily dislike them. I rather kind of enjoy it when I have a couple guys just 
sexually fainting all over me. I'm kind of like a guy that way. And it was, I was like, okay, it was his birthday. He did, he gave me my birthday present earlier in the day, so I'll give him his. Not exactly how things turned out. Like I said, not my finest moment. So we go to Paul's room. And I don't want to be with Paul. He's not a bad looking guy, but I just want to be with Steve. That's, I've realized already that I like him more than I say. Like I say, I we have seen each other many, many, many times in this almost year span that we had first met in September of 1995. So there was a lot more internally going on with me at the situation. And so he's like... You know, Paul, uh, he's like, he's like, here, show Paul your cute little boobs. So I showed him my boobs, and Paul touches them and is playing with them. And Steve was, too, and he's like, yeah, that's how I like it. That's how I like it. And he's like, he's like, you show him your dick. He's, she's, he's got a big dick. And then as he's showing me this, Steve's like, hey, I've got to go to my room. He's like, let me go grab something. His video camera, which this video camera comes in later, a few years later, at his own house, mind you. But so he goes down and I'm like, what the fuck? He just left me alone with Paul. What? What is he doing? You know, and he'd given me his room key earlier. He's like, so he's like, he's like, here, just come when you're done. And like when he left, he gave me his room keys. When you're done here, he's like, just come back to my room. And I was like, what do you mean when I'm done here? What the fuck do you mean when I'm done here? And Paul's just laying back on the bed with his shirt and jeans on. He's got his well-sized manhood out of there, out there, and yeah, I was like, why are you showing me this, Steve, because he's a little thicker than you, not that Steve's small, he's not, he's, I like what I had from Steve, obviously, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the, I don't want to sleep with this guy, I don't want to kiss the guy, I don't want his pee pee in me, so I just give him a fucking hand job, and it was not just any hand job, it was a goddamn angry hand job. Just fuck just are you off yet? Okay, just, just don't fuck fine, you're done. Goodbye. Just like and it wasn't like totally angry, but I was just like Whatever. Yeah, it was an angry hand job. And I was just pissed at Steve. And like I said, Lisa had gone down the hallway with Glenn Matlock. But when I went back to Steve's room, I walk in and there is Lisa. And he's like, oh, I just saw her while she was walking away from Glenn's room. He's like, so I just brought her into mine. She had her clothes on and stuff. and But Lisa was one of those. If she could get a leg up on somebody else to make herself feel better, she would. And she, this will come into play videos later. Because like I said, Steve Jones and I were friends for five years. About four and a half, five years. So this is only the first year. And... Like I said, whenever, I wouldn't give me Steve my phone number, so I go into his room and I'm just like, hmm, what's going on here? He's like, so now let's have our little threesome now that, he's like, now that I know Paul ravaged you. I'm like, shh, ravaged me. I gave him a hand job without lotion. His dick is the only thing that is ravaged here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. But yeah, I was just angry. And he was like, yeah, that was good. I'm like, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Mm -mm. And I didn't say anything to Steve. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I said, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it in the morning. <laughs> oh, that's why the, the, the title of this video is Steve Jones and the Angry Hand Job. So anyway, we're back in Steve's room. And so he's like, well, I want to have a threesome. I said, fine whatever you know because like I said I'm still I'm pissed at this point because he left me with Paul and I told him that I was and he was like well let me make it up to you baby gives me that little Steve pout and his little pouty voice because I love his voice god it's my fucking weakness but at that time in my life so fine we'll have a threesome with me and Lisa which he was like let me make it up to you does the no tap, tap, tap on Steve Jones because he was goddamn good at that. And Lisa's like, my turn. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> he's like, suck my dick while I'm eating a pussy out. And he, so you get the idea of what was going on. And I was just mad as hell at him. And he could tell I was just angry fucking him too. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, you know, he gets off. We all get off, even though it's angry sex. Sometimes that can be fun. Not for Paul, but 
for us that night. It was fun. <laughs> so, and then we're all hanging out, and I'm like, well, we better go. Because Lisa's like, she's all trying to rub on him, and Steve was like, yeah, yeah. Steve's not a cuddler, honey. Don't don't be all touchy-wetchy with him. And so he goes, he's like, hey, he's like, before you go, Allison, he grabs my wrist, and he goes, here, and he grabs the hotel paper. Whoops. I got stuff falling out. And he gives me, can you see it? Oh, God, I've got to, this is his phone number. Yep, Steve Jones gave me his phone number first. Because I wouldn't give him mine. So he's like, here, he's like, give me a call. He's like, I'll be back in, you know, in a couple weeks. And I was like, okay, fine, cool. And he's like, no. He's like, I really mean it. And Lisa's like, we'll call you. He's like, no. He looks at Lisa and goes, no, I just want her to call me. Just her. And so Lisa was like, what? And I'm like, honey, you're just an accessory to our party, okay? And I don't mean that mean, but yeah. Anyway, it'll come out in several videos because there are lots more of Steve Jones to go. So he gave me his phone number first. And I still didn't give him my phone number that night. So Lisa and he called us a cab. Lisa and I jumped into the cab. We went a couple blocks to back to our hotel where my cousin Petey was waiting. Had a really good rest of the night. Got on a plane the next morning. Okay, I have to tell you what happened the rest of the night. Lisa and I were in bed playing the fart game with Cousin Petey, and I had on these silk boxer shorts, and a little bit more came out, so I kind of more than farted on Cousin Petey. I should know, after the Blue Easter Cult thing, which I vlogged a long time ago, never to play the fart game. It does not work out for me. Or for Cousin Petey. <laughs> Oopsie. So that's what happened the rest of that night. Went back down to Salt Lake City. Or Salt Lake City. Went back home to Las Vegas. To Lisa and I's apartment. You know, which I was actually paying bills because she never made money. She just sat in the dressing room all day. And she had gone to her ex-boyfriend's house or for a couple of days to hang out. and Because she, she was trying to figure out whether or not she wanted to get back with him. And so I decided while she was gone... I would call Steve, who I knew wasn't home yet from the pistol store. So I called, left a message on his machine, left my phone number. Two minutes later, hello, love, my phone rings. Mm -hmm. It's Steve. And it became like that from then on. Even because uh, they were still doing, do, uh, later that year, he would still be on the road with Neurotic Outsiders. Which would be the next, not the next time. He would come to Vegas a couple more times. Because now that he had my phone number, he's like, hey baby, he's like, I'm on my way in. So we would plan morning, afternoon, and nights together. <laughs> and yeah, this is when he gave me his phone number on August 30th of uh, 1996. And I still, I didn't give him my phone number. That's, and that's, you know, for someone like Steve Jones, you just don't give out your phone number to just every girl you're fucking. Otherwise, you're going to have half of West Hollywood calling your ass. And that's just on Thursday for Steve. So, yep. And whenever he called, he would purposely be like, Hey, Allison, you know. And Lisa did try to hide a couple messages from me. And she picked up the phone when I was at home one day. Because I was out doing photo shoots. And she had the day off. And she would try and talk to him. Because Steve would tell me these things. So she was trying to kind of slide her way in, which the only way she slid in was on his birth for his birthday up in Seattle for that threesome. So we had that threesome and we had a good time, but I was pissed and poor Paul probably had to get a new foreskin by the time I was done with him. Mm -hmm. So there is one of the other times that I was with Steve Jones in that first year we were together. Like I said, not my finest moment, but I knew how to keep Steve Jones because he was addicted to sex, and I was the ultimate at the time, I guess. I don't know. I knew what he wanted, and I still know how he likes it. Messy. So, I knew how to keep that man addicted to me, and I kept him addicted to me for almost five years. So, this was when he gave me his phone number, and from then on... It was, it was on between me and him. 
And you know what? I'm pretty happy it was because he's a good guy. And we had a lot of fun together. And we really matched each other as far as personality and where we were in our lives at that time. And he was the perfect guy for me to have. And there was a while there, a couple years, where I, if I wasn't with Steve Jones, I was with Vinnie Paul. And if I wasn't with either of them, I was with nobody else. So... That kind of tells you, you know, groupie grows up, but groupie still has these different relationships, but they're real relationships. There's actual friendships and feelings and respect and care. And that's the night Steve showed me that I was the queen. No, I'm kidding. I wasn't the queen. But I knew when he gave me his number first that he actually really liked me, even though he probably never said it out loud, but he did. And we'll find out even more why. So there you guys go. There's another time with Steve Jones and the angry hand job. So if you want to hear more about stuff, like I said, I'm going to see if I can do more private stuff that's for my subscribers only. My Patreon people, I have a lot of stuff coming up right now. I'm trying to decide if I want to put Metallica Part 3 in Denver on here or my Patreon. So leave your comments below. All right, guys. Thanks again, everybody, for all the love, all the support. You guys are rock. You're so awesome. I can't even tell you how much I love all the people I've met. Thank you so much. So hit that subscribe button. Everybody share me. Hit the like. Hit my bells. And we'll see you next week for some more Cocktails and Rocktails. Cheers, Big Ears.